Thank you, Alanis. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You know what? You make it look so effortless. Sit there and belt it out. What would you like? Nothing. I'm you sorry, know? I missed that part. It I seemed said, like a request of you sorts. You make it look so effortless. Oh, oh, thanks. You know, what's amazing to me is that this record hasn't been out that amazingly long. I mean, it's been out a couple months, two, three months. Yet I'm looking out in the uh, in the audience, and some of I mean, your lyrics are not simple lyrics. A lot of them are very complicated. And there are girls here who know every word to every song. It's unbelievable. It's cool. Yeah. And that's got to make you feel cool. It does. Makes me feel connected to the women and men. <laughs> We're going to take some questions uh, from the audience. The last time we talked to you, Alanis, we forgot to ask you about this movie that you're doing with Kevin Smith, The uh, Dogma. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Um, I play a very small role in it. Um, you play you, God, though, don't I you? I play God. God can be small. a small role. <laughs> um, it's a small role, yeah. Small. God is small and big. Um, it's a movie that Kevin Smith wrote and directed. It should be out, I think, at the end of the year. It's called Dogma, and I just read the script a couple years ago, and it was so amazing. And he's brilliant, so I was I was very open to. He's amazing. In. Who else is in the movie? Linda Fiorentino, who I love, and uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, and uh, very small Chris movie. Rock, yeah. who I love. <laughs> Put your hand up if you have a question for Atlantis, and we'll try to get over to you. We have the one Atlantis one. press conference. We have one right here. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for doing this. This is really great of you. I Thanks really, for having me. I know we all appreciate it. Uh, my name is Jace, and I was just wondering, I know you went to India not too long ago, and I was wondering what exactly you did there, because it seemed to influence you a lot, in, you know, musically and lyrically. Um, I went with my mom and my two aunts and a couple of my girlfriends. We just went backpacking. We started in Calcutta, and then we went up north. It's going to be a party when you take your mom on vacation. It's going to be a tour manager experience. No, she was amazing, actually. And my aunt, one of my aunts had never left Ottawa, which is where I was born and raised. So the first, first time she ever left Ottawa, she landed in Calcutta, which was hysterical. And, uh, and I realized it when we landed that perhaps, you know, it wasn't the best idea. But she was amazing. So we just traveled all over the place, and we separated. And I went down south and did some yoga. Anybody get sick there? We all did. We all took turns. We passed the baton. Yeah. <clears throat> We have another question over here. Hi, Lannis. I'm Todd. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to let you know that I love you so much, and your music really changed my life a lot. And um, last night, you were amazing, like always. Thanks. But um, I was wondering if No Pressure Over Cappuccino is going to turn up ever as a B-side or anything. Uh, yes, I think we're actually in the midst of talking about that being a B-side right now. Oh, great. So, yeah. I love that song so much. Thanks. We have another one over here. Hi, Alanis. My name's Ansley, and you're unbelievable. I think you're such an inspiration to women, especially with Thanks. what you have to say. Um, this is kind of funny, but the song Dear Matthew, Dear Jonathan, whatever, mm -hmm. those are real guys that you were involved with then? Um, in some shape or form, not always romantically. But, okay, because yeah. I was going to say, if that's like their names, they have to be out there listening, going, oh my God. Some of them are. <laughs> yeah, who's, yeah, who's the next hit? You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's me. Hey. I mean, I, was, I guess I was laughing, listening to it going, like, I can relate because girls are like that. You'll write down stuff, but if they ever called you and said anything, I guess I just want to ask, is that completely literal or you're saying that it's kind of just... No, I use shape. variations on their names okay. and nicknames. Some of them actually are real names. The people that I talk to directly, I use their real names. Like, um, you don't want to ever date a guy named Harvey because that would not sound good in a song. Like, Harvey... It would sound perfect in a song, actually. Harvey or, I don't know. <laughs> Got one right here. What's your name? Ariel. Nice to meet you, Lance. Hi. Uh, I was wondering when you were writing both Jagged Little Pill and Sports of Femmer, former Infatuation Junkie, if you foresaw um, so many people connecting with your music, or was it kind of overwhelming when the records were released and you saw so many people, people influenced by it? I was pretty insulated, so I was just writing for myself. I think any my favorite artistic expressions are ones that are very sort of self self-indulgent, self-expressive, whatever you want to call it. So it was heartening when everyone connected to it because it just made me feel less alone in all of the things that I was thinking about. Have you seen this website that, that will spit out your own Atlantis song? I heard about it. Have you seen this? Did you do it? You uh, No, I just saw this. It says you can uh, you type in it. the thing you hate <laughs> most. I did it with cats. Did you? Yeah. Six plural nouns. With cats? One of your yeah. exes, and it spits out a song. I'm a guy. I don't like cats. Oh. <laughs> You know that many cats? 
What's that? You know five cats? Uh, yeah, including, <laughs> including my dentist, Dr. Katz. Oh. But, hey. hey, what's your name? Uh, Stan Alanis, welcome to Atlanta. Oh, thanks. Um, I don't know how much you have to do with it, but if you did, uh, what was your feelings about bringing Liz Fair on tour with you? Um, I love her, and I asked for her to come on tour with me. <laughs> it was that simple. I just, I've been a really big fan, and I just really respect her, and her latest album it was the first record I bought after I finished this record, and she's just a goddess. So. Hey. Point. Okay, I'll hey, I'll have some break. Hey. Um, I was wondering what was the inspiration or the meaning behind Baba. Um, my having been in different environments <clears throat> that were touted as being spiritual and supportive and nurturing, and um, they were actually sometimes the opposite. There was a lot of competition and elitism within them, and they were supposedly based on compassion, and they actually weren't. So it was very confusing for me, and I wanted to write about it. Alanis, I have a question. You, uh, you know, we talked about your songs have a lot of relationship uh, issues in them, and you've obviously been in your share and have broken up with some and have gone through tough times. If you had a fill in the blank, you know, the one thing I always do wrong in a relationship is I put commitment before compatibility. <laughs> But I don't anymore, actually. You sign on the dotted line before you read the contract, right? Yes, I go, yes. And then I find out that, you know, we don't have anything in common. So then do you think, like, the whole thing, love conquers all, then isn't true that there are other things more important than just love that carry people through relationships? Yeah, love won't really carry you through very much. Love is there with everybody. I love everybody. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I should be with somebody. We're live at the Fox Theater with Alanis Morissette. What's your question? Hi, my name's Lauren. It's nice to meet you. Hey. Um, I guess I just want to ask, I know that a lot of your songs, whether or not they have anything to do with you, you still manage to put like a lot of personal emotion into it and everything. And I just want to know what made you decide to, I guess, go public, like to share your personal emotions? Because I know it's like hard to let all your personal emotions out. What made you decide to go public with CDs and concerts and stuff like that? I think it just it reached a point where it was hard for me not to. It was hard for me to repress and deny and sugarcoat. So I couldn't do it anymore, basically. When I started writing with Glenn, he just provided a very safe environment for me. I think that when we're in very nurturing environments, we um, tend to blossom. So I did that. And from that moment onward, especially in my music, not entirely in my life, but in my music, um, I can't help but being truthful. Yeah. How you doing? Okay, how you doing? Yeah, now that you've accomplished so much and you're still so young, what do you plan on doing with the rest of your life? And uh, if you had, if you had found that, <laughs> if you had found that soulmate you're looking for, could I take you out possibly <laughs> before you leave town? New it's pressure. Of, uh, <laughs> he's asking you, but he keeps touching me, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Okay, I gotcha. So you'll be on. Yeah, he's, he's touching me. Um, what was the first question? <laughs> what? What was the first question? Now that you're so young, oh, you've yes, accomplished, accomplished so me. much. Right. Yeah, I mean, what do you plan on doing with the rest of your life? Because um, it sounds like you're pretty confident judging from, judging from your songs. Um, I, there's so many ways to express um, ourselves, so I would love to do it through film, I would love to do it through dancing and acting and painting and photography and directing. There's so many different ways, so I'll continue to write music till I die, too. Well, we have time tonight over coffee, Eugene. To what? Do all those things? Go further into detail. Okay. This right. guy's working it a little. Strike through your ass. No, you know what? He's doing just fine. <laughs> and talk about accomplishments. Uh, Jagged Little Pill, the biggest selling album for a female artist of all time. No, that's not. I think of the 90s. Scott, anybody? Come on, you have your stat sheet, Alanis? I don't know. All yeah. right. Well, it sold a couple of albums. It's just very cool that you would still do something like this, though, for the fans, because a lot of people, when they get to the level of getting, you know, things like the biggest selling female artist of the 90s, they won't come and do things like this. And we appreciate that you did it. Thanks, I love seeing you. Thanks. Another, another question here? Hi, I'm Erin. I'm just curious, one of my favorite songs on your new album is You Are, and I was here last night, and you didn't play it, and you didn't play it here, and I just wondered if you did play it live, or if it meant so much that you didn't play it live. Um, 
I play it live every once in a while. We have more songs than last tour this time around, so it's just kind of a random selection intuitively before I go on stage. So we'll play it perhaps tonight. I don't know. Hey, what's your question for Alanis? Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I saw you about uh, 10 years ago back in Ottawa on a Canada okay. Day celebration. And uh, your music was quite uh, different back then, but uh, yeah. how did you make that transition from uh, what you, uh, you sang locally in Canada to your, your music now? It took a few years. I moved to Toronto away from Ottawa. I was working with a, a group of people in Ottawa for many years, and I moved to Toronto and wrote with several different collaborators. I wrote alone and wanted to be in environments where nobody had any preconceived notions of who I was as a person and as an artist. I just wanted to have the freedom to write whatever I felt um, I wanted to write at the time. So that took a few years to kind of get my bearings in that. I moved to Los Angeles, and I met Glenn Ballard. And again, I just felt very free to very unselfconsciously write whatever I wanted to write with whatever instruments and not worrying about what categories my music was going to fit into. So I think I, I just kind of merge all my tastes into one now, which is cool. you remember the first time you heard one of your songs on the radio, where you were and what that was like? Um, I was little. I was 10. <laughs> Yeah. You, heard, you heard yourself on the radio at 10? Yeah. I had a record out when I was 10. Uh, is there one moment that, let's say in the last 10 years, that you can remember thinking, you know, maybe it was something that happened that, uh, like, you had an epiphany and thought, wow, my life is forever changed, um. as far as, like, your career goes. <laughs> Did something happen to you, or was it an award or an accomplishment? It was probably the tour for Jagged Little Pill, and it was very overwhelming, but I think the biggest turning point for me was when I stopped for the first time in my life. I'd always been really kinetic and running and vibrating on these crazy levels, and I stopped for the first time ever about two years ago, and it was a pretty big turning point. It was exciting and terrorizing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alanis, we were going to ask you the, the meaning of the dirty feet on the Rolling Stone cover. Was that just you didn't have time to wash your feet, or were we supposed to get some kind of message out of that? <laughs> There's no big symbolic expression there. <laughs> no, I was sitting down, and Walking around everybody was barefoot. freaking out that my feet were dirty, and I just said, relax, it's totally cool. And... It was fine. <laughs> it's on the photo. I didn't really think we're, about we're it. We were thinking it's either some big message or just she didn't have time to wash her feet. Alanis, what kind of image are you trying to portray <laughs> for cleanliness is next to godliness, young lady? Everythingness is next to godliness. <laughs> dirty feet. God loves dirty feet, too. <laughs> Here's a question. What's your name? Hi, my name is Andrea. I'm really nervous. I really idolize you a lot. Um, She's talking to Barnes. <laughs> Talk to Alanis. Oh. Um, I know this is way off the wall, but what made you pose nude in your video and for your album? Um, just my being really comfortable with my body over the last few years and not objectifying it, not treating it um, as the ornament that society often wants us to see it as, and treating it more like the instrument and being very unselfconscious about it. And it felt very. It was very important for me to express that over the last few months. If you we're not lucky enough, if you're listening to this on the radio, we're not lucky enough to want to be one of the few hundred people who are in the room. Alanis is completely naked. I can't believe you did. I, mean, that's, I was figuring was that was going to come up at some point. Special little thing here. We have time for one more question. Hey, what's your name? Hey, I'm Tom Wages. Um, I manage some local bands here in town, and I try to travel with them as much as I can because I'm living the good old days uh, before they get really <laughs> successful. And a lot of the things I've seen is how much you appreciate your downtime. Uh, yeah. We love each other very much, but when you're trapped in a bus for each other days and hours, I just want to see what's your favorite thing to do when you get home to kind of reconnect with society. Myself and I like to go to a movie because it yeah. kind of lets me go from, I don't know, slip back into reality somehow. Um, I like to putter around my house, walking around, doing nothing, and I love to go snowboarding. And I like to get outside. Any plans to do another triathlon? Yeah, I'll do some more. Excellent. Well, I think I can uh, speak on behalf of everyone here and everyone at 99X. We really appreciate you doing this private session today. It was very special. Thanks. Thank Thanks. Thank you. Said, guys. The best of Barnes, Leslie, and Jimmy. 99X.